we're going to talk about sex. Okay, so as you might have figured out, reducing your eliminated ejaculation is going to change the way you have sex. It's not that having lots of casual sex with girls is morally wrong. Okay, I still stand by my products and my articles. If that's what you want, um, I have I have that available to you. You know, you can check out my book, How to Get Laid on Tinder. I think every guy, I think it's not the worst thing for every guy to be able to go through a period of, of being able to have that abundance if it's possible for him with his sexual market value. But uh, we are talking about levels of consciousness here. And I'm, I'm telling you not to say that I'm better um, if that's what you're doing, but I'm saying that it's a higher level of consciousness and on a higher happy level being able to transmute that energy. It, it is, it really is. And if you haven't experienced that firsthand, you know, you might be thinking what I'm saying is, is kind of bullshit. And, and I might have too, but for sure. If I'm 23 or 24, I'd be like, you know, dude, shut up. Just, just show me how to get laid. Show me how to get more girls, you know? But I'm telling you from someone who has been through that, who's experienced it, it can become emptying very quite quickly. After a year or two, it's very easy to get bored of it. Transmuting that energy is, is a whole different level. And... Again, in the sex act, I can't have multiple dry orgasms with a girl, but I can go really slow and create insanely happy bliss states with a girl that I care about. And I can't have the multiple orgasms, but I can mentally direct that energy up into my kidneys and up into my heart chakra, which is um, in between your breastbone here in the middle of your chest. Again, when, when people are talking about chakras, it sounds like hippie stuff, but really they're just energy centers in your body, okay? So you've got one in the tailbone, you've got one in the prostate, you've got one in the, what the Taoists call the Dan Tian, which is your pelvic floor right above your penis, and that's the major one for sex, is the prostate and the Dan Tian. And you've got one in the solar plexus, you've got one in the chest, you've got one in the throat, you've got one here in between the forehead, and you've got here at the top of that. Right? Apparently, if you're able to transmute the energy above the top of your head, you're enlightened, so... You know, if you become a Buddha, um, make sure to pay it back and help her brother out with some of that uh, Dharma. But uh, the ones that I can feel consistently are the prostate, which is, you feel that in, in, in um, as a major energy center, the Dantian, uh, the solar plexus where you feel the adrenaline and sort of that sexual hunger you feel the sexual hunger in the throat but the heart center is where you feel the heart and the kidneys is where you feel the love and up the spine is where you feel that uh the creating that goosebump sort of sensation like like you know that that lightning bolt um so there's various different ones and you're gonna have to play with it and and what you want to do when you're having sex is just close your eyes and picture where you're feeling it and then picture if you're able to just okay i'm feeling this in my dan tian can we move that up into the heart center can I focus on loving my girl? And when I focus on loving my girl, that, that energy is also gonna naturally move up into the heart center, okay? It's gonna, you're gonna feel it mostly in the heart center and the kidneys, and when it's releasing in the kidneys, it's gonna release in like these waves of pleasure that are gonna go from, from your kidneys, and it's gonna go up the two meridians outside of the spine in your back, and it's gonna feel like sort of this wave of like light, not ticklish, but... Um, uh, high vibration, high frequency energy, kind of like, and you know, make your eyes roll back in your head a little bit. And again, I can't do the 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 orgasm, the multiple orgasms with a girl, but I can move that type of energy around. And dude, when you're doing that for two hours of slow bonding sex with a girl that you love, man, it's going to be the best sex of your life. It's also going to be the, it'll be the highest point of your year in terms of um, being able to generate bliss states. Again, check out my article and video how to create uh, tantric style bliss states on that. And uh, the longer you've gone without ejaculating, the more powerful that experience is going to be. Okay, And this is coming from a guy who's had every type of kinky sex with a girl there is. Um, you know, I was, I was, we did, I did swinging. I did, uh, um, we'd go to like fetish parties with public sex. I mean, you name it. And, uh, those experiences don't even come close to slow bonding sex with the girl that you love. I don't even have interest in that all stuff anymore. Really? Uh, don't get me wrong. I, I have slipped up more than a few times in the last couple of years and had, sloppy drunk casual sex where i ejaculated most of the time that was a a bad drunk 
alcohol infused late night decision. It's not something I seek out during the day, but um, I compare it to drunken late night McDonald's, right? It's the same thing. It's, it's fast. It's, it's sort of junk food, junk food and junk food sex. And you're drunk, you crave it. It feels good at the time. And the second it's over, you're like, oh, why did I do that? Right? The second you come, now you have a girl that you don't really care about in your bed. You feel exhausted. You just want to go to sleep. Same thing with McDonald's. You, you power that down. You're drunk. You eat it. You're like, oh, I feel gross. You know that the next day you're going to wake up. It's going to make your hangover worse. That's sort of how I, I equate it. I Don't get me wrong. I still slip up. But it, it is quite infrequent. And it becomes, the more the more time goes on, the more infrequent those mistakes become because I just don't, I, I, I don't want it anymore. It's not like I've had to force myself away from it. I just don't want it. And it will really be some, some type of altered consciousness like alcohol that, that will make me seek it out. Um, just knowing that I don't want to ejaculate changes your perspective on sex because I can tell you outside of those occasional moments chasing down a girl that I don't have strong feelings for to have condom sex and for it not to be great because I you know I don't have strong feelings for her and it's the first time and I'm wearing a condom so it feels like I'm having sex with a garbage bag in between her and knowing that I can't ejaculate and that I'm not going to be able to generate any type of strong bliss states it really takes the fun out of casual sex it, it really does, uh, because before that casual sex, for me, when I look back, it was just about chasing that ejaculation. When that's taken off the table, I'm like, I'm not really interested in that, because I know that um, I'm not going to be able to get any of those good benefits, and I can't come, and it, it's just not worth it. Unfortunately, though, finding a girl that you care about doesn't happen, happen overnight, and also, you might find a girl that, that perhaps you have feelings for, but she might not be good for you. She might not be a loving, loyal person. So then you're going to have to screen her out as well. When you've maxed out your sexual market value, getting laid can be relatively easy. But finding a girl that you care about means going on a lot of dates, putting in the time, um, and playing the numbers game. So depending on, on where you are in your transmutation process and how busy you are in your business and whether you're doing a celibacy reboot and how your situation is with girls, you're going to have to adjust your uh, program accordingly, okay? So here are your options. Here are the levels from the least ideal to the most ideal. And these levels sort of parallel the, the levels that I gave you in part one of the ejaculation levels that, that you should be looking for, okay? So level one, starting from, from the lowest, is tantric masturbation and sex and ejaculation twice per week. Level two is tantric masturbation and sex plus ejaculation once per week. Level three is no PMO except for sex and ejaculation twice per week. Again, guys, I'm ranking no PMO higher than tantric masturbation. Level four, no PMO except for sex and ejaculation uh, once per week. Um, level five is, is tantric masturbation and uh, celibacy. Number six is tantric masturbation and caretza sex with a high quality MLTR. And number seven is no PMO and tantric Caretza style sex with a high quality girlfriend who loves you and you love her. That's, that's the ideal. No PMO, loving girlfriend, transmuting all your sexual energy into your business and into um, creating loving, really happy sex with, with your high quality girlfriend that you love. That's the ideal. One thing to note though, if you're worried about ejaculating with a new girl, okay, so let's say you're doing no PMO or you're, you're practicing tantric masturbation and you're working on not ejaculating um, or, or you're just trying to ejaculate less frequently, it, it can be difficult with a new girl if you're new, to the, if you're new to this because you're so excited. So what you can do if, you, if you're finding a new girl is, is just sort of explain to her that you're trying to feel sex on a deeper level, a more bonding level, and that you're, you want to go slow. Okay. You can even say that, you know, I like to wait a few dates or, 
you know, instead of trying to get her home on the first or second date, you can wait till the fourth or fifth date if you're if that's what you're looking for. Now, your typical party girl might not be interested in that. You know, if you meet her at a club, she might want to, she's drunk, she might want to come over and have sex, and she's probably going to want to have, you know, your rougher, more adventurous sex. But believe me, many girls will be more than happy to find a guy who, who wants to go slower. Um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, again, check out my article and video on Tantra Caretza Sex, but you also want to check out a site called reuniting.info. It's the ultimate resource on higher consciousness sex. Um, it's especially important to check this out if you have a girlfriend or wife because it may save your relationship. To me, the, the first thing, the first nail in the coffin of any relationship is when you start to get bored of having sex with her and she starts to get bored of having sex with you. And this inevitably happens with everybody unless you learn sexual transmutation because of what I explained in part one called the Coolidge effect. You know, the more ejaculations you have with one per person, the more your biology says, okay, well, that's enough to get her pregnant. Let me go on to the next girl. But when you're not ejaculating and you're transmuting that energy, you create those blissful states and it, it will either help or stop the two of you from getting sexually bored with each other. And if you don't believe me, check that site out. There's tons of um, feedback from couples who've said that this has saved their relationship if I do choose to get monogamous again in the future, it will be an absolute must that this girl is committed to slow bonding sex the same way that I am. Because I know that in every other relationship I had where I wasn't doing that, I would, you know, you're, you're going to get bored of the sex within two to three months, you know, six months at the most, if not sooner. So very, very important. With that said, okay, again, when we're talking about pure no PMO, no PMO and no sex will be a lonely period. And it, 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 it might be more difficult than you can handle. I can't handle no PMO and no sex. When I'm doing no PMO, I have to be having that bonding sex to recirculate that energy. That's why the key is to have a good girl, ideally a girlfriend. And it works for a number of reasons because when you quit porn and orgasms, your bonding with her will go up. If I don't have a girl that I care about, which is right now, I will I will go back to my um, tantric masturbation, which I try and do in my own head, and I try and do, I try and um, not fantasize while I'm doing it. I try and, and and just do the technique and just feel the sensations whenever I feel an excess of energy. Um, but the pure no PMO and pure no sex can be difficult. If you can do it, uh, don't let me stop you. It, it is, you know, that, that is a good thing, but that's just something to keep in mind.